This video covers tachometer signals and tachometer signal conditioning. Tachometer signals have always been a source of great debate. As a manufacturer of instrumentation, including tachometers for decades, New Vintage USA would like to shed some light on the subject and hopefully clear up any misconceptions about just what this mysterious signal really is. In reality, by just looking at the signal on a scope, We'll show you exactly what it is and the best way to condition that signal for use on a tachometer. We don't expect everyone to have an oscilloscope, so this short video will get right to the point on how to pick up these signals correctly. Tachometers operate by reading the signal from your ignition system. This is a pulsed signal. Each pulse is counted and the microprocessor converts this frequency into the pointer movement you see on the dial. Gasoline engines generally count the number of times the coil fires. Diesel engines mainly use some sort of sensor. The same theory applies to both types. New Vintage USA tachometers can also read pulse signals from some PCMs. Check out our tech blog for more on that. So here are some general guidelines. Know where to pick up your signal at. If you are using an aftermarket ignition system, the manufacturer's instructions will label where the tech signal will be coming from. Keep tack signal wires away from speed signal wires, ignition wires, fans, pulsed pumps, anything that may either interfere with the signal or the tack wire might actually resonate a signal to something else. Filtering. New Vintage USA tachometers have built-in digital filter designed to optimize the signal coming from the source. You can change it based on your needs. Know if you have a high energy ignition system before connecting the signal wire. Damage can result if installed improperly. First, let's cover some conditioning techniques, then we can apply those to different applications. New Vintage USA tachometers have multi-stage filter that is adjustable either via the OLED screen or dip switches on the back of the gauge. Typically, this is sufficient, but on occasion, due to a huge variety of ignition system on the market over the years, some additional conditioning may be required to read the signal properly without damage to the sensitive tachometer input. We include a 1000 ohm resistor on the tachometer card with every new vintage USA tach sold. This is used in applications where the tach signal energy may be uncontrolled and a high voltage spike will cause damage to the tachometer. This resistor is to be wired into the signal wire as shown on the diagram on the card. It is in line, just like it shows in the diagram. It can be soldered or crimped. Make sure it's covered with heat shrink or tape when complete. We will cover the applications that require this later in this video. If in doubt it's a high energy system, install it. Only risk is a weak signal. It's better than damaging the gauge. It can always be removed later if needed. The pull-up resistor. This is used in applications like the GM PCM tech signal. It converts the tachometer open collector signal, which is a ground to nothing, to a Hall effect signal, which is positive and negative. It installs with one side on the power, the other side on the tack signal wire. It can be crimped or soldered and then covered. It's also shown on the uh, booklet and on the card. The resistor is a 10,000 ohm, one quarter watt resistor. We will cover this in a little bit more detail later in this video. Okay, let's go over some tack wiring uh, schemes. Shown at right is a traditional coil distributor setup. The distributor can be points or electronic. In general, no need for the for the 1000 uh, ohm resistor to be installed, unless you're using a Pertronics, anything in the setup, you're using any type of high performance coil, you have removed the ballast resistor, then you should use the 1000 ohm resistor in line as it's shown on the card. Uh, the HEI distributor is a nice compact unit that incorporates the coil right in the distributor. Most HEI setups after 1976 are fully electronic and have a TAC output terminal on the side of the housing. This should be a 12 volt square wave signal it is excellent for tachometers. However, recently we have seen a large amount of new units with high discharge signals which can damage the tachometers. We would recommend when you're first installing it to install the 1K resistor in line just in case. You can always remove it later if needed. It should not be required. However, this is based on our experience over the years. 
The CDI or MSD box, as it's commonly called, this is probably the most popular ignition system set up for aftermarket ignitions. The MSD box is a multiple spark discharge system, or MSD, which can generate up to 60,000 sparks or pulses per spark plug firing. Every system like this has a tack output right on the box. It's either a 12 volt or 5 volt square wave signal designed to be clean for a tack to read. Notice the box has power and ground going to the coil. This creates a high voltage feedback that will damage the tachometer input. This is exactly why a separate output is used. No conditioning is required, and all of these boxes have either a terminal or a plug or something coming off the side with a tack output on it. Uh, this is a coil on plug. In most popular setups, you'll be able to take the uh, a tack signal directly from the PCM. In those instances where you cannot, the signal can be picked up from the negative side of the coil. This is essentially reading a one cylinder at a time, so the tack should be set up for one cylinder engine. The PCM actually acts as the distributor for coil on plug systems. You should not have to use any conditioning unless you are using some sort of high output aftermarket ignition system or coils. Tack wiring for GM, PCMs, LS, Duramax, etc. All new vintage USA tachometers can read directly from any GM PCM with the addition of a pull-up resistor. All GM PCMs, regardless of the number of cylinders, gas or diesel, output a four-cylinder open collector signal. The pull-up resistor converts this to a square wave. We have a full depth, in-depth article on the subject on our tech blog on interfacing with GM PCMs. It's really easy once you understand how to do it. Use the 10K pull-up resistor on this application this is installed as it's shown on the card in instruction booklet. It is not installed in line. It, it's a pull up between the tack signal and the 12 volt switch power. So just to wrap this up, remember that there are such a large number of ignition systems, manufacturers and signals due to technology changes over the years that some connections are different than others. In order to successfully read a tack signal, you will need to know what type of system and components you have, where you will be picking up the signal from. Based on those above conditions covered in this video, what type, if any, conditioning is required. Make sure to set your cylinder settings as well. It's not always the number of cylinders in the engine. And if you have any other further questions, feel free to get with us uh, on the subject or any other. You can email us at service at newvintageusa.com. Call us at 248-850-5482, or you can message us on Facebook or Instagram. Thanks for watching.